specifically. The full title of the presentation says, it writes the problem, uh, all rights reserved, uh, re reserved versus all rights reversed uh, with our way uh, uh, for OER. And, and that's what I'm going to uh, focus on. Uh, now, uh, I, I just want to provide a context to, to my presentation by going back a bit uh, 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 into history so that uh, we get some ideas about how copyright has evolved and uh, what the driving uh, 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 force has been behind. Uh, and I think we have to go back to John Locke, who actually uh, 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 said that individuals are owners of themselves, which was something that gave birth to the notion of um, uh, uh, property rights, which was applied to the property of ideas out of which uh, uh, copyright uh, resulted. Uh, and so we, we, we see the notion of a property, uh, which is an economic thing, uh, coming out very strongly. Uh, and when we go to the Statue of Anne, which perhaps I think is the first UK copyright law that we have, uh, that it was designed to promote monopoly within the uh, uh, printing industry. Again, we have the drivers there. And the World Intellectual Property Organization uh, defines copyright in these terms. But the point I want to emphasize is that it is designed such that creators uh, can lead a dignified, can have a dignified economic existence. So again, we see the, the whole notion of economics driving copyright, and I think that's where it comes from. And it's important to emphasize this point for, for later points that are. Uh, but when we look at global development, in other words, going back to when copyright started, we have seen a shift and changes uh, in global in, uh, uh, development from the industrialized age to the information society. And now we talk about a knowledge society in which knowledge is created, uh, 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 shared, used in very specific ways. But the emphasis here is that it's for the well being of people. Uh, it is more focused on society rather than the economic benefits that accrues to an individual. Now, and, and we see the effect and the impact of these uh, changes um, uh, in the global educational uh, uh, front, where openness has now become uh, a defining feature of global education in terms of how knowledge is created, distributed, and used. And the examples of open course where iTunes, YouTube, uh, Wiki Educator, Wikipedia are, are all testify to the way in which education is changing linked to some of the points that were made uh, uh, earlier this morning and how technology is very central to how this is happening. But the, the, the fundamental thing is that uh, education is now designed to support the widening of participation that everybody gets involved, inclusiveness and lifelong learning. Uh, and, and we begin to see, looking at the type of education that we've had in the past, um, uh, uh, with what is currently going on, uh, uh, attention. And looking specifically at attention, it was uh, uh, Stephen Downs who used the term learning uh, uh, 2.0. Uh, we have moved from uh, the kind of learning which was emphasizing uh, uh, the cognitive to constructivism. Now we are talking about connectivism, uh, the notion of the wish democracy, digital migrants, social connectedness have become very central to how we learn now. Uh, and therefore, if we contrast the social const constructivist uh, pedagogical approaches to learning with what uh, one would term the transmissive uh, dominated pedagogies uh, or learning 1.0, we see that there is a tension there, and that tension is likely to generate a risk uh, of inadvertently violating copyright laws because the copyright laws were designed at a particular time when learning was understood in a particular way, which is quite different from uh, the changes we observe. And uh, how is this impacting on information sharing? Uh, we, we, we now see what, what I would uh, say are blurring lines between who is a producer, in other words, what was traditionally classified as an author. This person owns the, 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 the knowledge, the right. There's a blurring divide between producers and, and consumers, and, and, and terms like prosumers and producers are emerging. Uh, and this has been driven again by technology technology, we have collaborative tools that allow people to work, uh, customize, remix, repurpose, and map. up. So the, the question of who owns uh, knowledge or who owns content, who, who, who can be classed as, as an author, is, is changing uh, uh, in, in a very dynamic way. And as is the notion of what it means to copy, uh, the notion of copying in the printing age or printing press age cannot be understood in the same way as we, we, we understand it today. I'm sure a lot of you here would admit uh, that 
if you forward any email to anyone, it is a way of copying. And uh, technically, you are breaking the law uh, 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 if, if it was applied. My, my, my contention here is that uh, are the copyright laws we have outdated vis-a-vis -vis the changes in global development, vis-a-vis -vis changes in the, uh, education, vis-a-vis -vis the impact of technology uh, uh, on learning and on society in, in general. Um, and I made a point earlier on that the notion of what it means to copy changed uh, from what it was understood at the time that copyright laws were put together. Um, somebody would say, oh, there are fair use clauses that allow us to use uh, 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 copyrighted materials. But the point is, again, that fair use clause was designed for, for use within what was seen as a classroom space uh, 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 be, be behind physical walls. And the learning doesn't so much place in, 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 in that way. And also, uh, the evidence shows from a, a piece of uh, a article I read recently that young people have lack of respect for copyright whatsoever because for them it is getting in the way of their creativity and, the, and, and bringing up their creative potential. Some have even gone as far as saying that copyright is anti-development and they cite evidence from the engine, from the development of aeroplanes, which is contrasted with uh, development in software engineering and the textile industry to show how copyright right actually arrest the development stop development rather than bring about uh, rapid de de development which is what uh, 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 people who uh, uh, support copyright who would always use as an argument and, and and there's also obviously the difficulty of enforce the different copyright laws in different uh, geographical jurisdictions across the world and uh, uh, let's face it we have to be real uh, uh, and say that look we cannot carry on using the same old age laws in an era uh, where society has moved from individualism to, if you like, a, a more uh, open, uh, collective uh, kind of society. Uh, and some would argue that, okay, we have creative commons and, and that provides an answer. And yes, it says you can use the material, uh, but if you attribute it or the, 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 if the, you use it in non-commercial way, uh, and some authors specify that uh, you can use it if there are no derivatives, or uh, if you share alike. And therefore, Creative Commons is seen as a flexible uh, uh, copyright law that improves access, it supports uh, collaborative activities, and, and, and it's computer readable, and therefore can be searched across. And therefore, hooray, look. There is the answer, and uh, why, why still make a case against copyright? I would argue that Creative Commons is not the answer to the copyright problem that we are faced, and we need to address the problem head on. A uh, CC license uh, or Creative Commons is not an alternative to copyright. In fact, you still need the explicit permission of uh, third party right holders in order to use the materials. And as Tanya mentioned earlier on, if you do not have permission, you cannot go ahead and use it period. Uh, there is also the question of the lack of clarity regarding the enforceability of uh, uh, Creative Commons uh, licenses, uh, because the validity of it would be according to the legal jurisdiction in which it is applied. And uh, uh, if, if we, we have problems enforcing it, then it is, it is not at, at all uh, 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 legal proof. Uh, there's also issues about Creative Commons licenses have no effect on moral rights. Um, and therefore, substantial modification of the work can actually undermine the integrity of the original work. Who understands the term commercial and non-commercial? What does it mean? It is very confusing to a lot of e users, and the license, the Creative Commons license itself, does not distinguish between the meaning of the term. Uh, uh, even adds the difficulty that uh, 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 we have. Um, and again, th th there is the point about irrevocability of the license in the sense that uh, even if at the point uh, it is withdrawn because the person is not happy about how the material has been used, what has already been released out there carries on and people are allowed to use it. And I have also read somewhere that copyright laws do not actually cover database uh, rights. Uh, it's not very explicitly stated in, in the CC license. And therefore, the CC license itself is a problem. And I'm sure some of you are aware that there's a growing list of uh, CC licenses uh, uh, um, uh, uh, coming out. Recently, there was a, I was at a symposium uh, in Leeds in which the medical people were asking for a specific uh, type of CC license to cater for the issues and issues they face within that discipline. Are we going to end up with uh, maybe 
50 different type CC licenses and how long would this list grow? Uh, 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 but the problem is because copyright is an automatic law, whether you like it or not, it is there. And even if people want to opt out, the law says, no, you can't do that. Uh, you, you, you still have to be protected. And what I'm saying is that we need something which is more, uh, flexible and that responds to our current needs. My conclusion, and this was a recent article that was published on the question of copyright, and it is a view that I share, that as the Internet transforms the way in which knowledge is communicated, shared, shared and built upon, having all rights reserved is no longer uh, appropriate within the sort of educational and learning context that we have. And I dare make the point that copyright laws must shift from the economic and commercial interests that they were designed to actually pro pro protect to something that has more social significance that is beneficial to society at large. Uh, I know people will disagree with me, but I feel very passionately about it. And I've cited examples from other industries to support this. So let's the debate.